Um, I'm very honored to be here once again. Uh, the few times that I have spoken for Trendy English, it's been a huge pleasure and I really enjoyed the audience. So um, before I start, I wanted to say that the topic that I chose at the time had to do with motivation, especially during these really troubling times. And I thought to myself, oh my God, what am I getting myself into? <laughs> so, um, but however, this is a topic that is really serious, you know, nowadays, because uh, a lot of students are lacking motivation. And unfortunately, this has been detrimental to their progress, not only at school, but in their personal, you know, uh, lives. So without further ado, let us begin with our presentation. Okay, we will be talking about motivation. Now, when you ask someone what motivation is, he might give you a simple, you know, explanation. However, Motivation is much more, you know, complex than we originally think. Motivation is a reason for action, willingness, and goals. Do our students have goals at the present moment? Hmm, not really. Motivation is derived from the word motive or a need that requires satisfaction. These needs, wants, or desires may be acquired through influence of culture, society, lifestyle, or may be generally innate. Now, we all know what's going on, you know, in us. Uh, society right now. So they are lacking, you know, all this stimulus. And of course, we have to help, you know, cover that stimulus and, you know, uh, reignite that motivation. Now, an individual's motivation may be inspired by outside forces, extrinsic motivation, or by themselves, intrinsic, which is something that is not the case now. So we, as teachers, are going to cover this part by offering them this extrinsic motivation. Now, motivation has been considered one of the most important reasons to move forward. So after starting off with this introduction, okay, where should we start? What is the first thing that we should do? Well, we should start off with ourselves. Now, I know that most of you are probably um, cu curious as to what I mean. It's not a secret. I mean, the children, our students can sense our anxiety our anguish and our disappointment. However, it's up to us to be genuinely invested in our lesson. And I know what you're going to say. I mean, are we supposed to put a fake face on and start smiling? Well, you have to invest yourself in the lesson. And believe me when I say this, when you're in class, you have to put aside all your worries. And the most important is the power of reciprocity. What do I mean by this? For those of you who are not aware what reciprocity is, I'll say it in very simple English terms. When you offer love, you receive it as well. When you offer compassion, that comes back to you, okay? The students know that we're all disappointed nowadays. Everyone knows that we have a lot on our minds. However, they will appreciate the fact that we are trying. And in turn, they will, you know, acknowledge these feelings and, you know, try to do so as well. All right, and they will reciprocate. Now, Let's talk about the best ways of motivating our students. Finding the proper way to motivate your students in class is not a simple task, okay? We know this. And of course, what might work for one student doesn't necessarily mean it will work for another. Okay, so what are the factors that we should consider? First of all, we're teachers. We've been teaching for many years. Students' interests change. We are aware of this. Uh, it has to do with culture. It has to do with games. I remember four years ago, my students were into Minecraft. Now they're into Fortnite. And believe me when I say this, in one or two years, there's going to be a new trend. Hobbies, what are their hobbies? I mean, back in the old days, we used to collect things. Now we just play video games. However, we have to uh, be aware of what's going on. And of course, social media. Now, this is a funny story. I remember one of my E-class elementary class students, a girl, she's like 13 years old. She bumped into one of my junior uh, A-class students because, you know, uh, when I finish one class, the other one comes into uh, the classroom. And I remember they were having this discussion. Uh, the little one, who was a junior A student, had 800 followers on TikTok. And my elementary student turned her head to me and, you know, she said, Miss Catherine, I feel really old. <laughs> so you understand that culture and, you know, uh, the things that kids like, what they are invested in, these things change drastically. Okay. Now, as I just mentioned, each generation, each generation differs from one age to the next. And to be honest, 
students can't adapt to our way of thinking. Okay, this is what they're growing up with. We, however, should adapt to theirs. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, we should, you know, start our own TikTok accounts. However, it's a good idea to know what they're interested in so that we won't, you know, be left out of a conversation and that we can show that we're generally interested in their hobbies. Now, all of this interest, this investment we do in our kids, they will appreciate it. Now, how are we going to find out what they're interested in? Ask and learn. Ask, you know, your kids, what is going on in sports? What are their favorite celebrities? What kind of music do they listen to? I remember some of my kids were making fun of me. They were like, Miss Catherine, don't you know Dua Lipa? And I'm like, no. <laughs> so uh, I actually heard some of her songs. They're okay. And you know what? It is a good idea to invest just a little of our time every day to see what you know are the latest trends, okay? Now, what are they playing on their phones? I mean, I asked them the previous day, they're playing this game like they split into groups of fours and you know, they play Among Us. Uh, what is their favorite social media platform? And I'll get into this later on, okay, why it's important to know these things. Now, the most serious question we can ask in class, what would they like to learn? I mean, ask them, you know, guys, is there something that you would like to learn? And you know, we'll do it in English. I've spoken about CLIL lessons in the past. I've written a lot of CLIL uh, material for uh, publishers. It's a good idea to try to adjust your lesson to their interests, okay? Whenever it's possible, of course, because we also have a deadline. We have to, you know, cover some material. Now, before continuing with motivation, we have to examine the type of students that we have because not every student is alike. Now, we have weak students who try but often fail, and it's really sad because, you know, they're doing their best, but, you know, they're not up to the task. However, it's our responsibility as teachers to find their strong points. I mean, they might be good at, you know, drawing or speaking or writing or presenting. Okay, it's up to us to support and encourage them. And, you know, when they do, you know, class projects, it's a good idea to assign them, you know, uh, the things that they could really um, shine, in uh, other words. Now, a second type of student has to do with indifferent students. Now, a lot of times, you know, as teachers, we say, he doesn't care about the lesson. Why should I care about him? But it's not the case. An indifferent student is usually weak and ashamed, and this is what causes his indifference. Now, in these cases, we have to offer him a goal. We have to motivate him. Now, I will use uh, an example. Um, last year, I remember I visited uh, a school and they called me there to train a few of their students for a TED-Ed club. So they wanted their, their students to become TED-Ed speakers. I remember when I was uh, speaking to the audience, I presented what TED is and what they could do. And this girl, and for conversation's sake, let's call her Irene. Irene approached me and she said, I would really like to become a TED-Ed speaker. And I said, that's great, you know, go register to the secretary and I hope I see you in two weeks when we start the program. I remember when we did start the program, she wasn't present. And I asked the principal, where is this girl with the long hair, Irene? And he said that she's a horrible student. If we let her take part in this program, we will become humiliated. Now, at that point, uh, I really insisted that she take part. And thankfully, the principal did hear me out. Now, what did we gain by this? You should always offer opportunities to your students. Because if we slam the door in their face, they will become indifferent and they will never try. As for the girl that I was talking about, yes, of course she made mistakes on stage when she was presenting, but she was shining. She was wearing her best clothes, she was smiling, and we all applauded her. This was a huge motivation for this child. Now, this might come off as really surprising to you. There's a type of student, the meticulous student. Now, What's going on here? Why am I even referring to students like these? I mean, there is a meticulous student who is eager and willing to learn, but usually they overdo it. And in reality, they miss the point of school. Why do they come to school? Because their parents make them, obviously, okay? Or, you know, because they want to impress their teacher and their parents, but this is not a motivation. Further down in the next slides, we will discuss how we should properly motivate, you know, our students. And of course, ask them, what are they really learning? Are they learning English to impress us or because they need to use English somewhere? Okay, now 
This is what we've all been waiting for. Motivational approaches. How are we going to motivate them? Let's start off. Encouragement. This is so simple. Everyone can do it and we should be doing this in class. We know that our students look up to us for approval. I've said this before. They consider us a third parent. They love us. They don't want to disappoint us. So they often doubt themselves. Now, they have low self-esteem and you know what? It's up to us to praise their efforts. We should tell them that, you know what? You can do it. I believe in you. Good job. Even it's something so simple. Even if they write you a task, an essay that has 20 mistakes, you should still focus on the good aspects of what she has done. Okay. Now, second motivational approach, incentive. Okay, incentive is something similar to motive. However, this is something that I picked up at the school that I'm working at. And I'm very proud to say that it's not my idea, it's um, the school and um, the rest of the staffs. It is a good idea to offer recognition awards. And I'm not talking only about junior classes, I'm talking about teenagers that are in elementary classes, B2, C2 levels. Now, a recognition award for something simple like, you know, um, the greatest effort in class, you know, who tried the most, who did uh, a really good, you know, project or anything. This can be done uh, once a month. You can assign them the goal at the beginning of the month. And of course, at the end, you can offer them a trophy and have a little celebration. Usually what we do, we have a few treats, you know, treat them a pizza or something, you know. Uh, and it's, it's great because we also take pictures and we put the picture of the student, you know, in the hallway, in the corridor. And we say, you know, this is the student of the month. We have to praise their efforts. It's such a simple task and you have no idea how much this will affect, you know, uh, a child's mentality. Now, creativity is another motivational approach. How does creativity come into play here? First of all, projects. You are all aware that, you know, assigning projects to our students is a fantastic way of helping them uh, invest themselves into English. For example, you might tell them to do a project about the solar system. They will search for information online. They will do a presentation. They will stand in front of the class. They will practice grammar, syntax, their speaking skills. I mean, a project has numerous benefits and we should not overlook this because of the research they'll be doing and of course the presentation, as I mentioned. Now, this is the part I really like, real life connections. Be honest with your students, ask them and make them wonder, why am I learning English? So if you ask them, why are they learning English? They'll most likely say, because I'm obliged to, okay? Now, in this case, I will uh, advise you to have an honest conversation with your teenage students, talk to them about professional opportunities. It's not a lie, we are all aware of the fact that if for some uh, reason, you know, um, they find a job at an international company and not only an international company, we're talking generally any kind of company because we all know that we are collaborating on an international level. Okay, uh, globalization has brought us closer together and the language that we are all using is English. So you should explain it to them. How are you going to send an email? How are you going to speak on the phone with them? How are you going to uh, do a presentation in another country? about the product that you just created. Now, personal evolution. In this case, we have to explain it to them that, you know what, you are um, learning English not only to become uh, successful professionally, but also on a personal level. I mean, we are all, you know, into traveling. We would like to visit other countries. The international language of communication is English. It would be difficult, you know, to do this even to order something simple at a restaurant. And in general, both professional and personal uh, evolution helps us become active members of society. If you have this conversation with your kids, believe me, they will actually listen to you. They will become more invested into what we are doing. Okay, now, I love this so much. There's a motivational approach called sense of control. What do we do here? Now, sense of control has to do with um, assigning them different tasks, class responsibilities. No, we're not talking about junior classes. We're talking about teenage classes. And I will share an example with you. I remember one of my teenagers about 14, maybe 15 years old, 
uh, he was tasked, you know, with the class duty of doing the photocopies. So when I needed something, I'd often tell him, can you please go downstairs to the secretary? He would take the papers, go down. He might bump into, you know, uh, the school principal. He would speak with the secretary and this boosted his self-confidence. And um, he actually became more communicative because the student in question was very shy and it actually helped him. Okay. Now, besides this, there are so many responsibilities that you can assign, okay? And it doesn't have to do, you know, with uh, stationary or cleaning the classroom. You can assign someone to be a uh, head of project or to, uh, for whatever reason, you know, uh, be in charge of, you know, the absentee form. Simple little tasks that we could do, but it gives them a lot of motivation to, uh, you know, try even harder themselves. And, of course, make sure that all the students get the opportunity for each task. Now, a change of scenery is always welcome. Uh, I was very scared of trying this. And yes, I understand it has to do with which country we live in, the season, if it's you know warm enough to do something like this. But you know, first of all, you can redecorate your class, okay, based on the season. And this, you know, uh, will make uh, learning in the specific classroom much more enjoyable. And if it's summer or spring, you can teach your lesson elsewhere, maybe in the schoolyard. I've done this many times, and believe me, it is an enjoyable experience. I mean, if, you know, your school has a front yard with grass or anything, you can actually, you know, sit outside, enjoy the sun, and have a lesson. I've done this on multiple occasions, and believe me when I say this, they are highly invested in the lesson. Now, if it's winter, you can also teach on the floor. Yes, I've done this as well. First of all, um, you can use, you know, rugs. I usually uh, borrow a few of the rugs from, my, from the junior classes next door, and I have my teenagers sit on it. And, you know, what's beautiful about, you know, teaching outside and on the rugs, your students come to appreciate you even more. They respect you even more because you're on the same level. Okay, you're sitting on the floor with them, and they come to appreciate the fact that you are part of the team. Okay, and they will be much more, you know, um, interested in participating. Now, you have to try something different. Go on a field trip, take them somewhere to see something new. How about a guest speaker? Now, this is the part that I really love. I remember uh, I had an acquaintance, he spoke English quite well and uh, he came uh, and presented himself. He was a firefighter and the students were blown away. They loved the whole presentation. After that, we asked the gentleman if we could you know, visit the fire station, he led us and it was amazing. Another guest speaker that I brought who spoke English quite well, uh, he uh, was the editor, chief editor at a newspaper. So he explained the whole procedure of, you know, producing a newspaper. And we also, you know, visited the premises of the newspaper publication. Finally, and this is the best of all, I brought a magician in to my students and, you know, they're teenagers, but they loved it. And of course, he did the whole show in uh, English. And um, this is, you know, something different. And there were so many different terms, both for the newspaper, the firefighter, the magician, words that you usually don't find, you know, in a book. And they loved it. Okay, I have to speed up a little. Now, it goes without saying that as teachers, we should uh, try to have a threat-free environment. We should be aware of any bullying that occurs in class. Okay, prevent it from happening. Maybe your students are from a different country. We don't want them to be disgraced. You know, no discrimination based on gender, nationality, or race. Positive competition. This is also a motivational approach that I am in favor of. Try to have them compete each other, but in a friendly spirit. And of course, you have to be very careful how you praise your exceptional students because bullying can be triggered both ways. Imagine, you know, praising a fantastic student about the marvelous job that she's doing and, you know, having the other kids making fun of her. Or maybe she, the student who is, you know, an exceptional student, might be making fun of the others. So you have to be careful of things like this. Peer work. Now, collaborating on projects is something that I've always, you know, recommended. I explained it earlier. It will bring them closer together. It builds trust, codependence, and respect. And of course, when they're in class after, you know, doing a huge project together, they will feel much more, you know, at ease. Okay, he's my friend. Uh, it's not that much big of a deal if I make a mistake in class. So they'll be more, you know, relaxed and they will start raising hands more often. 
Okay, now this is the part that most of you have been waiting for, because what I've been talking about has to do with general motivation of students in class. But what about our new reality? And you know what, I'm trying really hard to be, you know, optimistic, I'm smiling, especially when I'm, you know, teaching my kids. And I teach all my lessons, you know, online now, I'm alone in a classroom, watching a whiteboard. And usually the screen is blank, and I'm just speaking to a microphone. So how are we going to handle this? Online teaching. First of all, let's think about this. How badly has the pandemic affected our students? Listen, our students have suffered both academically and socially. Okay, we are fully aware of this. No matter how great technology is, um, there are a lot of issues that uh, come from, you know, online courses. First of all, there's stress and anxiety, okay, because of the whole situation. Students are not themselves, we are not ourselves, you know, and it's difficult. We try to cope with what's going on. Frustration. Our students feel rightfully deprived of all this freedom. They are at a very tender age. They want to enjoy their lives, and this is something that, you know, they're not doing right now. Okay, so indifference, they see a bleak future. Now, can we motivate them online? Well, we have to take advantage of the situation. Don't only stick to the delivery of the lesson. Use the technology to bring them together. Let them chat when possible. Okay, when I have a break with my kids, I let them, you know, chat on the board and it's chaos and they love it. Group work, presentations, videos, have them, you know, do TikTok videos. You still can't get through to them? Are their cameras turned off? I really hate this screen. <laughs> okay, now a lot of times my beloved students don't even, you know, turn on their cameras. But we have to bear in mind that they have no privacy at home. Their parents are over their shoulders monitoring them every second. Sometimes they're afraid and ashamed of revealing their room. I mean, we have to put ourselves in their uh, shoes. Possible solutions, well, distract them. Resort to small talk to help them forget where they are. Show them your own space. I'm not saying you have to, but if you want to, it will make you, them realize that, you know, you're going through the same thing. You have to adopt a positive attitude. Use the power of reciprocity to inspire them. Be empathetic, share how you feel. And to be honest, I tell them all the time, I hate this whole situation. I have to prepare myself emotionally to turn on the camera, even when I'm not in the mood. And you know what? You have to take baby steps. Ask them to imagine how it is to speak to a blank screen, because this is what happens to me a lot. Ask for small favors. Please turn on your cameras, at least in the end, so I can say a goodbye. And you know, they understand that you know you love them, and they in turn love you, and they actually do this. I even posted something on Instagram a few days ago about how I feel about teaching and they all read it. I had a lot of, you know, likes and, you know, they said, thank you, teacher. We love you too. These are difficult times and we have to support them both emotionally and educationally. Okay. This is our job as teachers. Okay. I would like to thank you all. It was an amazing experience presenting to you once again. This is my contact information for anyone who would like to send me an email, okay, or find me online or on my blog. So. <laughs> uh, thank you, Catherine. Thank you very much. Dear participants, if you have any questions to ask Catherine, please type them in the chat and uh, I'll deliver them to her. And. Um, yeah, Catherine, thank you very much for uh, touching this um, uh, important question. I mean, um, where there are English teachers, uh, there's also a question of motivation uh, in the room. And uh, you structured it perfectly, like you talked it, and I can see this clear picture. And um, I'm uh, particularly interested in um, approach um, and or, or a tool um, so which you talked about um, i mean um, inviting guest speakers into the classroom can you tell me uh, do you prepare your students for this lesson somehow that's a very interesting question and um, 
To be honest, not really. And the only thing I do, I actually do hype them up. I try to inspire them. Guys, we're going to have a guest speaker next time. And, you know, they're actually intrigued. Who is it? Where is he from? I give them a few hints, but I will, I don't expand on what he's going to say. And it makes them curious. So I think that curiosity is a motivation in this case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. Sounds so interesting. I want to try it. Yes. And, um, okay. And uh, you, you were talking about uh, TikTok. And what about you? Do you have your favorite TikTok video? <laughs> Can you share it with us? Actually, I have a favorite TikTok video. It's one of my uh, goddaughter. She's 13 years old right now. And she does these hilarious videos. And I think that more or less all the students do the same thing. They dance to songs. But I, I really, you know, want to say that, you know, I, I use this for motivation. I watch her, you know, dance and smile. And that's, you know, my favorite thing. I don't actually, you know, I have an account, but I've never posted anything. <laughs> I just follow my students. <laughs> yeah. All right. And uh, yeah, um, students are so into TikTok um, around the world. And yeah, we, we have uh, to keep uh, up to date on this topic. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And uh, you also mentioned that um, at some point uh, teachers need to have an honest conversation with their students be brave to ask this question and how do you usually do this and uh, do, do you do this um, in private or in the classroom how do you do this i, I love this question because uh, i have two approaches to this specific uh, topic now first of all if for example my students uh, have a test or they're not doing well in a specific unit. I mean, all of us have had classes that kind of, you know, lagged or are not, you know, up to the standard that we would like them to be. Now, in these cases, I try to take advantage of a bad test or a really bad day. And then I say, guys, look at your marks. I would like to have an honest conversation with you. I mean, if the students are not trying, I will have the conversation. If they are trying, Okay, that's a different issue. But if they're not trying, I try to tell them that it's important, you know, to focus on your studies. Because if you don't focus, you will have a lot of issues in your future, professional ones, mostly. Now, in the case that there is only one or two students, yes, I will ask them, you know, to speak with me in private. And I try to do this by sending them an email or a message. I don't even say anything in front of the others. I try to be as discreet as possible. And in these cases, I try to smile as much as I can. I, I never reprimand my students. I do not want them to feel uncomfortable. But I try to encourage them. And I also tell them that I'll be by their side. Whatever they need, I'm going to help them. And yes, I try to give them some extra material and some advice. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you for commenting on this. And um, I'm looking in the chat and I, I can't see any questions from the participants for now, but uh, a lot of them are saying thank you. And thank um, you as well. yeah, they feel inspired. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, when I was listening to you, I could really feel your caring attitude towards students and it is really inspiring. Thank you very much for joining us today, Catherine. And you. Uh, if you have time, if you are able, please join our ELT Cafe, uh, which will turn into Trendy Brandy Bar and we can celebrate this day together. Uh, thank you very much again. We are very happy to have you. It was my pleasure, believe me. You are a wonderful uh, audience. I really enjoy speaking for Trendy English. Thank you. Hopefully we'll meet uh, online, uh, offline, I mean. Offline, of so, course, yes, yeah. at some point. I'd really at like that. I soon. haven't been to Moscow yet, but I'd really love to. That would be great. 